I restored this Amiga 1000 a couple of years ago, but since then, the story has completely changed. So today, we are going to restore this Amiga 1000. So this machine is gonna be going to Geek with Social Skills for a Humane Society fundraiser. Hey, future Mike here. Yeah, you heard that right. He asked me to donate a machine for a Humane Society fundraiser in 2022. So I've spoken to the Humane Society and they confirmed that no such fundraiser actually existed. In fact, the only question is... Is it cake? Is it cake? Is it cake? So yeah, talking to the Humane Society, it looks like the only auction they had around that time, they auctioned off gourmet cakes. So... I don't think it's cake and I'm not gonna cut into this one to see if it is. So yeah, it looks like this was a scam, but rather than pull the video, I wanted to edit it and keep it up because A, I'd like to raise some money for real for the Humane Society, and B, I really like this video. So let's see if we can make some ice cold lemonade out of these lemons. Now, for those of you who may be wondering, this came from the Stone Collection, and I wanted for some of the machines and things that came from that to be used this way for charity. Uh, doggos, as you know, are part of my heart, so having this go up for a Humane Society auction seemed really good. So I'll shorten up the old material, but if you want to skip ahead and just see the new stuff, there's chapters in the description, and I'll mark the new sections with a splat. Also. Any new text will look like this. Uh, this is the machine that was in the front door. So right at the front, when you came in, this was sitting there. Um, what I'm restoring to go up there is the machine with the mouse and the keyboard, no monitor or external drives or anything. And we'll take a look and see uh, what's inside. I have never worked on an Amiga 1000 before. This is Amiga 1000 numero uno. There we go. So now, oh look. We're detecting signs of life but not for long. And we're going to be using these. Carl Stone had these by the dozens out there. And uh, we had a lot of different names we had for them, uh, Carl Cups. But what uh, Carl's grandson settled on as the favored name is Stone Storage. So I've used several solutions over the years for keeping my screws when I'm working on machines. But from now on, it's stone storage. There we go. Out without breaking anything. Okay, looking okay inside. There's a little bit of signs of rust, but it doesn't look terrible. And looking in the top case, we have the infamous molding of everybody's names. But the one I wanted to take a look at here J Miner's dog's paw print. So I couldn't think of any other machine that would be more appropriate to go to a Humane Society charity fundraiser. Future Mike here, and again with the fundraiser. So now that I'm satisfied that no such fundraiser ever existed, I wanna make sure that the Humane Society gets something for this. So I've made a donation to the Humane Society for Southwest Washington, and there's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate as well. The link is specific to the chapter that the, you know, fundraiser was supposed to be for. You know, the fundraiser where they auctioned off cakes. I think some of that cake ended up on my face. And of course, if you want to donate but to your local chapter, you could do that as well. I will have to look up later and put in here the name of J Miner's dog, because. I'm a terrible Commodore fan that I don't have that memorized. There are the names of all kinds of people that worked on the Amiga 1000. Now the front cover slips right out. Disconnect the drive. Carefully release this upper tab. 
and the LED just pulls right out. Since I am going to retrobrite this a bit, I gave them the option of retrobrited or non-retrobrited, and they decided for retrobrited. So I am going to clean this up. I'm going to clean the top cover up, and then the mouse covers. Yay! I really hate the twist type ball releases. I like the slide ones. Mouse is reasonably clean, considering how nasty these things get. This front panel looks really nice. All right, so these pieces are going into a retrobrite solution in the sun. The keyboard is just going to go bask in the sun for a while, and I'll be back in a little bit. All right, continuing to work on this, a beastie boy. Let's get this shield off. Wow, somebody wrenched that down. This stuff is so crazy tight, I'm suspecting that this may have never been opened up before. I mean, you can hear the crack as it comes loose. You know, there's a lot of cost-reduced systems out there. I think for this, I'd like to see a screw-reduced one. Twist to release there. One down there. And we're in. We're in like Flynn. Okay, so beautiful old Motorola 68000, as always, my favorite dip chip. And then some very sexy looking ceramic chips. The riser daughter board that allows for kickstart to be loaded from disc. Funny thing is, what I really want is to get the power supply out so I can make sure there's no reefas in it. Once I know there's no reefas in it, I want to go ahead and do a test boot and just see if this thing is working. A little game of operation here. Pull out the parts without damaging the traces. So right here we've got a twist tie that needs to be replaced. I don't know what the odds are of me remembering that. And one more thing. Ground lead for the floppy. This thing looks really clean. This is awesome. Yeah, a little bit of grime and dust, but not too bad. We'll get that cleaned up. Bet you I can just take the top off of this thing and see what's inside. And yes, I am not discharging this power supply because it has not been energized in decades. There we go. That's what we wanted to see. Okay, so AC, AC power. That's the fan, which runs on 120, lovely. There's the switch, there's the bridge. So then AC power is going through here. Those are the main filter caps, and those caps are not reefas. So, I think we can test this and just see what happens. What do you guys think? I think that is the name of the game. In three, two, one. Here we go. Boom. Hey, the fan's spinning. It works. We're good. All done. Got a flash out of the LED. Now it's dim. White screen. And it's asking for a kickstart disc. All right. Let's see Agnes playing tetherball. Or, sorry, Luna. So they're all nice and cleaned up. So next, it's all this good stuff. Let's start with a little air just to make sure we don't have anything in optical sensors. And a lot, a lot of crud up inside the ball tensioner. 
I get that all out of there. Certainly will keep the mouse from moving as smoothly as we would like. Here. This mouse is in pretty good shape. I'd say it was cleaned not long before it was put away. So where you run into trouble with these is when these get a whole lot of crud built up on them. I need to clean the cord pretty desperately, but I'm gonna wait till I get it all back together so that I'm not pulling on wires without tension. I'm gonna clean the ball with Windex. Alcohol on these balls will dry them out over time. At least that's my opinion. So, and this mouse got lightly retrobrited. So it definitely looks better than it did. And when the mouse goes together, there are two holes at the bottom, two tabs at the bottom with holes. On the top, you got the same thing, so they meet together. And then that mouse looks fantastic, except the cable, which is ugh, so gross. I have a feeling based on how sticky it is that maybe the original owner was a smoker or it could just be related to where it was sitting because this is the one that was sitting in the door at the entrance to the uh, shop where it's been sitting since the mid to late 90s part of the stone collection you know I know normally I say I hate it when I get into a machine and it doesn't need a whole lot but honestly this is such a beautiful, sweet machine that uh, I wouldn't want to mess with it. It just, it's in such great shape, you know, we'll deal with what needs to be dealt with, like the keyboard, the mouse, the floppy drive, but it works beautifully. It looks brand new. The fan in the power supply is dead silent, but it is definitely running and moving air like it's supposed to. I would be surprised if this machine has more than like a hundred hours on it because uh, it is just gorgeous. And that is what came off of that mouse cable. It was just gross. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to hit it with a little bit of Aerospace 303. And this is a UV protectant. It just thing, leaves things nice. I've used this in my car for years and then uh, saw a video, I think it was on Adrian's Digital Basement where he suggested using it on retro stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's brilliant. I don't know why I didn't think of it because I love the stuff in my car. It really protects your dash. So that's the mouse, all right. The keyboard, we'll do that next. Feet are all here and intact. All right, I think I'm gonna need a spudger for this. Oh! Mm. Ah. Well, that all just came apart at once. So, how's this looking? Not too shabby. I have certainly seen worse. Keyboards, a little bit of rust in here. Let the fun begin. I was about to take a picture. You should take a picture if you only have one keyboard. I got another one sitting right there, so I don't need a picture. Or you could pretend I have a picture of extremely high fidelity. So the key to removing keys is just put the key remover on at an angle. It's a little tricky to do looking through the camera and pull. So this thing is a bit dirty and a bit grimy, but not real exciting to watch. So I'm going to stop the cameras and I will come back to you once it's all ready to go back together. The screws are all in. Everything looks good. I don't like the way these corners look lifted, but I noticed that it's the same way on this other keyboard. So that is just the way it is.
Now that all of those are on, it's just a matter of making each one of these fit in the right spot. So let's see how fast of a keyboard assembly montage we can do, because you don't want to spend a ton of time watching me put keys on. But it's my first ever Amiga 1000, so, you know, it deserves a little love. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And normally I would lay out all the keys in order, um, but I've already done that once and then messed it up and I don't want to do it again. So, oops. And there is a beautifully restored keyboard. It's still a little bit yellow, not as bad as it was, but I went really light on the retro writing here. Um, but you can see that the logo still has the protective plastic on it. We'll leave that for whoever the new owner is. Okay, so next, the cord. Now, let's see how this worked. I've had this cord wrapped on here. I gave it a little bit of sun, cleaned it up. So let's see how it has fared. I am hoping it's nice and tightly wound. Oh man, that worked awesome. Almost perfect. That thing was all blown out and nasty. Now it looks great. Putting it back together again. Drive light. Let's get this floppy drive in. Okay, and once again, the joys of retro. Talk about obsolete technology, flathead screws. Whoever gets this machine, it's gonna be an awesome machine. This thing is just so clean. It's like a new machine. I'm really excited to get this thing done and up there. So I'm usually disappointed when a restoration doesn't require a lot of work. But in this case, since it's going to a cause, I think I'd rather have it be the condition it's in than some beater full of ants, maybe, that I have to uh, do a lot of work to get working, even though that's the fun part. Sometimes the cause is greater than the fun, I guess. All right, all the screws are in place, and so now we'll tighten them down. Well, sadly, I'm not going to have any leftover parts. Make sure we get a good connection there. So again, I really did enjoy doing this restoration and I'm not gonna let someone else's willingness to defraud people for their own benefit to take away that fun. Here we go, the moment of moment of truth. So once I finally found a working Kickstart disc, it booted beautifully into Kickstart and then into Workbench. And I had all 512 megabytes of memory. So let's hit the uh, three-fingered salute and try another disc.
fix this joystick. So there you have it. This joystick needs a little bit of love. That's the first time it's been used in probably over 20 years. But the machine looks great. It sounds great. So again, see the link in the description if you'd like to donate. And if you got this machine thinking it was not stolen, then get in touch with me and we'll see what we can do to get information for the police report and get you clear ownership of the machine. I hope this machine ended up giving somebody a lot of enjoyment. So if you can, leave a tip for the puppers. And here's a video where I first saw this machine when I found the stone collection. Thanks for coming.